Good morning, and welcome on this rainy yet beautiful summer day. As we come together, a couple of announcements uh, within the bulletin, and especially for those of you that were um, here a little bit later and didn't get a bulletin, we apologize. Uh, we, we had no idea how many people would come out, so we made a good guess, and apparently it was not the best guess. But I will uh, lead you uh, in this hymnal, and if you can share hymnals, things like that, I will let you know what pages we're going to be on, what we're going to be singing, etc. cetera. Uh, a note about singing. Um, we are used to, in a church setting, singing out loud and, you know, belting out our praise of the Lord. Uh, we're not going to be doing that. We ask that we kind of, like in our, our normal indoor voice, and I know for some of you that may be a little bit louder than for others, namely my children, um, let's keep it, you know, we keep it at kind of a normal, uh, normal tone, a normal talking voice as we sing. Um, then again, I, I know that there are a lot of people that don't even like to sing. So, well, hey, it works out. Uh, read the words or something. Um, but as we worship together today, we welcome uh, all the family and friends of Aidan Klein, who receives the sacrament of holy baptism today, and we rejoice uh, in his being welcomed into the body of Christ. Our worship begins on page 77 with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. And we, brothers and sisters, join together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We open up with the first hymn for today, hymn number 400.
The service continues on page 126. Holy is the Lord, the Almighty. He was, he is, and he is to come. He is worthy of glory and honor and power. He created all things. By his will they came to be. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain. By his blood he purchased for God people of every race and tongue, of every folk and nation. Christ made of them a kingdom and priests to serve our God. And they shall reign on earth forever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We sing together canticle number 14. of the world, listen to the word of the Lord, announce it from coast to coast, declare it to distant islands. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, judge of us all. You have placed in our hands the wealth that we call our own. Give us such a wisdom by your Spirit that our possessions may not be a curse in our lives, but an instrument for blessing others. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first lesson is from Exodus chapter 6. 
But the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand he will send them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they lived as sojourners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. So the, Moses, so the Lord said to Moses, Go in, tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the people of Israel go out of his land. But Moses said to the Lord, Behold, the people of Israel have not listened to me, how then shall Pharaoh listen to me, for I am of uncircumcised lips? But the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them a charge about the people of Israel and about Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Be to God. my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in the God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor, of love and steadfastness, of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, 
but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for this day comes from the book of St. John, the 8th chapter. Please rise as you are able for the reading of our Lord and Savior's holy and everlasting word. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are the offspring of Abraham, and we have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free you shall be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from yours. This is the gospel of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Are you coming up to Daddy? Is that what you're doing? Okay, wonderful. This is where I would normally do a children's sermon. I, I wasn't necessarily going to do one today. But I, I suppose maybe, maybe since my kids are up here and since I don't have a mask on, I guess I can kind of breathe on them. Um, and I will just kind of go with it. So today uh, our lessons talk to us about a couple of different things, but one of them is freedom. Uh, do you know what that word freedom means? means you are free from something. It means you're free from something. Okay. What might you be free from? Maybe free from your house when you grew up. Maybe, maybe when you grew up you can be free from your house, <laughs> which, which, which I think implies free from your parents and their rules and all that kind of thing. You know, and when you grow up, maybe you're free from school too. Yes. What's this? No more pencils, no more... Oh, wait, we won't go into that. Oh, you still have to work, so you're not really free. Okay. Well, when you um, are, like, are a real grown-up, you might go to work. If you're a real grown-up, you might go to work. Well, that's true. If you're, if you're a real older child, you might go to work, too, just hence. Um, that, that's for the future. You remember that. Um, freedom. Well, you know, are you guys free? You could please leave your shoes on. Yeah. This is where I would repeat that, that mantra. David, I know you say it sometimes. You know, it seemed like a good idea at the time, right? Yeah, yeah it, did, it did. You just wait, Kleins. Or, yeah, <laughs> you just wait till Aiden's older. Um, we're, we're set free. We're set free in the scriptures today. And we're set free to live without the fear of being, well, um, ruled over or oppressed, being told that we uh, cannot uh, do certain things. And while you may think that that might be your house, um, it can be much worse in the world. Uh, it can be much worse in the world. Here we're talking about freedom from slavery. Now, the people of God, the Jews, said we were never slave. Did you hear what Jesus said that we are all slaves to? We're not slaves to Jesus. No, Jesus sets us free. He sets us free. We're all slaves to sin. Do you ever want to do good things? And we're slaves to animals. No. To help animals. 
well, we're supposed to help animals, but we're not slaves to them. No, not really. In fact, probably the other way around. Have you ever wanted to do something good? Yeah. Have you ever done the opposite? Yes. Because we're all slaves to sin, right? We're, we're slaves to not being the perfect people that we want to be. But did you hear who sets us free? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Let's pray. Let's pray and we'll move on. And angels. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you set us free. That when we are mired down in, in brokenness and, and sin and we're mired down in the darkness, you give us a light that guides us. Lord, you give us a, 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 a light heart. You take away the burdens. Lord, you just make us happy. You fill us with joy and you remind us that uh, there is a place that we will be free forever. And Lord, we just look forward to that, and we, we have hope and joy in you, and, and now we ask that you would bless us today. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Gather up your shoes, your mask, and go back, please. And your, and your camel. Here, catch. Oh, did you... Swipe that from somewhere. Wonder, Tabby did, yes. Okay, set free from sin, right? You know, Tabby did it though, not me, right? Don't we do that though as human beings sometimes? Don't we make sure that when we have sinned or if we have done something that is, well, embarrassing or it was rude maybe or it was mean, instead of taking responsibility and seeking forgiveness, don't we sometimes just point the finger at someone else? Or how about this one? This has been very, very common in the world for about the last 2,000 years or more, but especially these last few months and, and you know, as we get closer and closer to an every four-year experience, well, I didn't say it, he said it, and because he said it, I get to say something equally as horrible. You know, how often did we do that as kids? Well, I didn't really do it, but he hit me first. Now, I always heard the phrase, and my wife says it all the time, two wrongs don't make a right. But somehow in our house, that is exactly what two wrongs make. Or at least that's the perception. We have a sense that we are, as the Jewish people of God, we are without blemish. We are without sin, and we have been slaves to no one go up to just about any American citizen, look them dead in the eye, and call them your servant, and you're going to, well, they're going to be upset. They're going to argue with you. They're going to be angry with you. And it's like that in many other places around this world. We are not used to being told what to do, what to think, how to behave, at least after a certain age, when we leave our homes, perhaps. Although, I don't know about your experiences, but my mother, she still tells me what to do. Don't always listen, but, uh, but I'm still told. It is what it is. But we're not used to being servants per se, unless we choose to be in that role. And we are certainly not at all used to being slaves. We've learned about things like slavery in our own country and slavery around the world, and we know it's not us. So how can we be set free? If we were never enslaved, if we were never imprisoned, if we have never been responsible, well, rather, even called to answer and do for another person exactly what they ask of us, if we have never been put into that position of servanthood, how can we be slaves? It's the same in Exodus as it is in the text from John. We are not slaves to the world per se. We are slaves to the sin and the brokenness of the world. We as individuals cannot avoid going against the word of God. We cannot avoid the ways in which we act based on what we want versus what God wants for us. My son had a wonderful experience this week. For the first time in his life, he got to go away with a friend. He got a certain kind of freedom that we yearn for from a very early age. He got to go away on a camping trip. Now, he had to listen to his friend's parents, but I bet that was a lot easier, a lot more fun than listening to Beth and I. 
he had a ball. He got to do things that we haven't yet gotten to do with him. You caught your first fish, didn't you? Or your first real size fish, not a minnow. You got to camp out. You got to do all kinds of things. And yet, by the time he got home, what were we? The worst parents ever. We're the worst parents ever. Because he didn't get what he wanted. And do you know what, Gabriel? You're not alone. If we look around this world, we know that reaction. We know that sentiment. We understand it perfectly because we've fallen prey. Dear Lord, I've gotten this, I've gotten that. I have a wonderful family. I have healthy children. But I don't have what I want. I want more. We demand more as a people. We don't want certain other things, but boy, we certainly are going to complain as much as we can when we do not have the things that we think belong to us or that we need. Jesus says it's that very sin that keeps us captive to a broken world, that keeps us captive to pain, to loss, to disappointment. It keeps us captive. It keeps us enslaved to a feeling where we never quite get to where we want to be. We always feel a little bit depressed because we do not have the job we want. We don't have the education we want. We don't have the money that we want. Jesus says, however, that he comes to bring us the truth. And it is the truth that will set us free. The truth that our greatest treasure exists not in Egypt, but in the holy lands that God is leading his people in Exodus to. The land of milk and honey. The land, the chosen place for God's chosen people. The kingdom of heaven. We have a place and a kingdom. We have a mansion and a banquet feast already prepared for us. And it is far more incredible than anything we can imagine. Now this doesn't mean that we will not take the truth and still find joy in this life and in this world. Of course we're supposed to. We're supposed to live this life with a powerful love for one another. A love that, for example, even though every fiber of our being is getting completely annoyed and overwhelmed by wearing masks, we wear them anyway. Not necessarily because we ourselves are worried, but because we love one another. Right? We're willing to sacrifice in joy and in happiness because we know in the long run that the things we do right here give people the wisdom and the strength to live a life that leads to the kingdom, to the land of milk and honey, to the place where the truth truly sets us free. And what is that truth? Jesus is the way. The light of the world. The path that we follow, the true wisdom the peace that passes all understanding. We can come up with a long list of the things that bring us joy, that will make our lives better, that would make everything all right again. And yet, without Christ in our hearts, these are but fleeting things, here today and gone tomorrow. But the peace we know in Jesus, the peace and the joy we find in loving and willingly serving one another is a joy that truly brightens each and every one of our days and leads us to a better life. Today we celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism. And while it is hard for us to grasp the idea that from the moment we are born, we are well, collecting crud. We are collecting sin. And it is hard to imagine a little baby being in a broken world. But through the waters of baptism, we receive a purification, a cleansing, a wiping away of everything that's come before, and a promise made upon us, a seal on our foreheads in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost that guarantees for us that as we walk with Christ, we shall live with Christ in this life and in the next, from this moment until eternity. 
We are given the promised land in those waters. We are renewed and restored before our lives on this earth really even get going. We are given the word and bestowed with the power of the Holy Spirit, an advocate, a guide, a protector, above and beyond mom and dad, family and friends, a protector from God that walks with us and leads us and keeps us every day of our lives. Truly, a promised land in the waters of baptism. From this moment forward, Aden will be set free from sin and death, as all who have gone before in those waters are. We rejoice with him. We look forward to calling him a brother. And we indeed look forward with him to marching and walking in the light of God to our everlasting home, set free by the truth once and for all. Amen. And now at this time, I will ask uh, if the family and sponsors will gather back near the baptismal font for the sacrament of holy baptism. And if you want to bring a hymnal, you can. I don't know how many are coming back. The service continues on page 121 if you'd like to follow along in your green hymnals. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. In Christian love, you present your child for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring him to the services of God's house and teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As he grows in years, you should place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for his instruction in the Christian faith, that living in the covenant of his baptism and in communion with the church, he may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations for Aden? If so, please respond, we do. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks as we come together this day that you have chosen to bring Aidan and his parents forth for the sacrament of holy baptism. We ask, Lord, now that as we give you thanks that you and all gathered here hear your words of truth. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood you condemned the wicked and saved those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
pour out your Holy Spirit so that this one who is here baptized may be given new life. Wash away the sin of all those who are cleansed by this water and bring them forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, world without end. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? If so, please respond, we do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If one of you would like to bring Aiden over. Just hold his head over. Come on up. Dad can get as close as, as mom. Aiden John Klein, I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. It's not that bad. <laughs> and here, look, you even have your own little cloth bib. <laughs> here, here, wipe his head, Dad. He didn't like that. He didn't like being touched on the head. <laughs> I don't blame you, buddy. It's a, you're fast asleep, and then there's water that's cold. It, it just, yeah, it, it's, it's all right. But you're, yeah, yeah, it's, it was just the shock of it. I know, I know. It's very shocking. <laughs> and now, let us go forth to the altar. Yeah, I'm sorry. Kind of. You want to go up? The Lord be with you. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to a new life through this holy sacrament. Pour out now your Holy Spirit upon John, Aiden, or upon Aiden, John Klein, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you are now marked. Amen. You just don't like your head being touched. <laughs> Should have just let Cheryl do all that. Aiden, our brother, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit, and you have been marked with the cross of Christ forever. Like your light still shines. 
Father sees your good works in your Father in heaven. Amen. O God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of Aden, Steve and Heather. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their son. Strengthen them in their own baptism so they may share eternally with Aden the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has made this new brother a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. We welcome you, Aidan, into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same heavenly Father, and worker with us in the kingdom of God. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. With the exception of in our own family units here, we share a sign of peace with one another. You may touch each other, but no contact in between the other groups. Again, a precaution, but you may certainly, as you see fit. Uh, this is when I would normally carry Aiden around. We're going to have to reschedule that, I think. <laughs> Not that we may have a big issue, but, you know, right, like better safe than sorry. But since I touched your head, I'm going to give you a little high five. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now it's all right. It's all right as long as I'm not touching your head. Yeah. Welcome to the family. You can blow that out. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Take a look. Take a look as he comes by. He doesn't have a mask on, so don't breathe on him. <laughs> no, just kidding. So um, you know, as, they're, as they're returning, one of the interesting things to me is the way in which the Holy Spirit works. And, and maybe, maybe because I'm the minister standing up front, it's cooler to me. Um, maybe I'm just uh, weird this way. But I think the Holy Spirit works in amazing ways. If you um, listen to those words that, that were spoken um, as we blessed the water before the baptism, where uh, through um, uh, Israel was led by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into freedom. We're talking about the holy land, the promised land. And then followed right up um, by, by Jesus. Uh, his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death. Um, I did not choose the lessons that I preached on today um, for this day. I chose them back in 2019. So it's kind of odd to me, incredible to me, amazing to me, that the Holy Spirit brought the clients here this day. We hear those very words for baptism, which are so powerful. They're, they're a promise that we learn of in baptism, and they turned out to be the lessons that were chosen better part of a year ago. So I just think that's neat. It can be neat to you guys too. If not, oh well. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Let us sing together. Our next hymn for the day, hymn number 295. Oh, 
despair saves us from the grip of death. Our lives are in his keeping. It is in God that we shall hope, and not in our own merit. We rest our fears in his good word, and trust his Holy Spirit. His promise keeps us strong and sure. We trust the Holy Son inscribed upon our temples. Paul is waiting for the Lord as one who longs for morning. Watcher with greater hope an eye for his returning I hope as us real in the Lord he sends redemption through his word we praise him for his mercy The congregation may be seated, and as we listen to the organ offertory, may we meditate upon the many ways in which we can use our time, our talents, and our treasure to bless the world with God's love, to serve one another, and to see our own faith grow. Spirit, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, lean at your Holy Spirit. 
spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Most loving Father, we pray for the church of which we are members and thank you for the light it provides on our journeys ahead. We pray for Pastor Jeremiah who leads us in worship and provides us with spiritual guidance and for all those who enable others to know that light in their lives. We pray for each other that we may respond to the challenges that discerned times present to us. Help us to be able to look at ourselves and to recognize our failings, our inadequacies, and the need for your presence in our journey of life. We pray for the whole family of the church. Bind us together as a family so that we can travel along life's journey, helping and supporting one another, standing tall and overcoming together all the trials and tribulations which confront us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Most loving Father, we pray that today's child, Aiden John, true to his baptismal vow, may walk in the light of the resurrection and be true to the gospel of your son, so that one day he may see you with unveiled face. May he know the closeness of your presence throughout his life, to uphold and sustain him in his Christian life. Let the example of his parents strengthen him in his faith and life, so that together they may enter the joy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, our healer, we thank you for your many miracles of healing. We bless you for your special interventions that change people's lives, whether spiritual or emotional. We pray for all those in need within our family, in our local community, and around the world. Those we know who are unwell, especially Donna, Rose, Kenneth, and Patty, Richard, Greta, Robert, Haley, and Shannon. Gloria, Mary, Aiden, Pamela, Sydney, Jim, Bob, Joyce, and Quinn, Craig, Shirley, Jason, and Darcy, Olive, Rose, Kelly, Gail, Tyler, George, Scott, Kevin, Ian, Larry, Igor, George, Kevin, Nicholas, all imprisoned people, unborn children, as well as parents preparing for childbirth or grieving the loss of a pregnancy. Our military personnel serving around the world and their loved ones waiting for their home. And all those who need in our hearts at this time. Cookie. May all of them know your love, comfort, and compassion. And in Jonah's doing so, receive courage and strength in their time of need. May your healing power touch their lives and strengthen them so that they may find you need help, both in body and soul. 
hear our prayer. our prayer. Let us continue on page 130 with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save, Save us from, from the time of trial, and, and deliver us from, from evil. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in singing our closing hymn for today, hymn number 293, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord and to love and to serve one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
as we depart, as we're listening to the postlude, please depart. We're going we're gonna to head right outside. Uh, we're trying to prevent too much gathering inside. But once we're outside, hey, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm not going to try and patrol the, 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 the parking lot. God bless you all. Let us meditate to the music of the postlude. Oh, it's so hard to breathe up there with the mask on. <laughs> <laughs>